Hello and welcome to another episode of the Asian Seller Podcast. I'm your host Meghla Bhardwaj and today we're talking about SOPs for Amazon sellers. And my guest is Gianmarco Melli from The Seller Process. Hi Gianmarco, how are you doing today? Hello Meghla, I'm doing great. Thank you for having me here. Thank you so much for joining us here, Jen Marco. And, you know, SOPs is something that sellers really struggle with, whether they are starting out, and especially sellers who are just starting out, but even experienced sellers. I've spoken to so many of them, and this is an area that a lot of people struggle with. And if they're able to put in place good SOPs, that really helps improve the overall efficiency of the business and, you know, the bottom line, the profitability. So I feel that this is one area that sellers don't really focus on but if they do, they can get a lot of uh, benefits and, you know, in the overall business. So super excited about the topic today. Um, but before we dive in, uh, Jen Marco, do you want to give an introduction? Tell uh, our listeners about yourself, your background and how you help Amazon sellers. Yeah, definitely. So hi, guys. I'm Jean Marco. I'm originally from Italy, and uh, but I, I spent uh, the last uh, six years of my life in Shanghai, where I basically started uh, my e-commerce journey. I launched my first startup when I was uh, uh, 24, and I got um, backed up by an SOSB, which is a um, like a, a venture capitalist firm that it's uh, backing, uh, hel- helping uh, startups to grow in China. So that was my the beginning of my e-commerce journey, and from then on, I've been in love with this space. And uh, and then, like four years ago, I started uh, selling on on Amazon by myself. Uh, obviously, sourcing products from China where I was. And uh, the rest is history. Last year, uh, sorry, sorry, actually this year, I launched this um, uh, the Seller Process podcast. In the, it's it's my it's the podcast that I host where I discuss basically SOPs, systems, and processes, which is something that I got passionate about and something that I really um, uh, implement in my my business every every day. So I I try to do what I preach and uh, and help other uh, Amazon sellers systematize their business and using SOPs in order to to create more operational efficiency in their business. So that's my story. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, your your time in China must have been very adventurous. I used to live in China too. Um, Really interesting time there. It is. It is. I really, I really suggest anyone to to have an experience there because really anything can happen. When I say anything, I really have crazy stories to to tell about that that period of my life. Yep. Likewise. <laughs> okay. So let's start with the basics first. You know, what exactly are SOPs, and what are some of the benefits that Amazon sellers specifically have by implementing SOPs in their business? Sure. So SOP might be might seems like a, um, a, a, a intimidating word. It just stands for a standard operating procedures. But what that really means is basically uh, the, the way you do things, uh, it, either in written down or in a video form, and that is basically the the model of how things should be done. Okay. So that's the either uh, you can see it as the easiest path or the most efficient way to do something, okay? So instead of having everything in your mind and just to do every day whatever you, you, you're doing in your business, all the tasks that you're performing, you're actually writing that down or putting in, in a, into a video. We will see actually in a moment several different types of, of SOPs, but essentially uh, you, you transfer your knowledge out of your head and put them into into a, a structured form so that you can use the same the same system, the same process, the same the same steps every time over and over in order basically to to create consistency of results and and th- there there are so many there are so many benefits. One of the one of the main benefit that I like to to mention is that it produces. Uh, residual results. What does that mean? So a resi- residual result results are when you put effort once and you get results over and over. Whether linear results are when you put the effort once and you just get results once. 
Okay, so uh, whenever you do something, but you, you don't record that, you, you just do it the way it comes out from like that day, the way you're feeling that day. Or every time you, you perform something that requires your, your specific input, that's linear result. And that's kind of a, it's not really the best way to, to spend your time. And we know the time is the most valuable thing. And in uh, talking about SOPs, it's really one of the main concepts, you know, operational efficiency. So being efficient with your time and your resources. So SOPs, what they do is to create residual results. So so you you create the system once you uh, uh, outline step by step what the what the task uh, how the task should be done and then you put it into into a document that then will give you will, will create results over and over in the futures you so you so that you can hand it over to your team and they can they can use that system for you uh, the same way you structured it okay so that gives residual results over and over in, on, in, uh, in the time uh, in the future so for example another uh, uh, the, the, the way I use SOPs, it's, uh, uh, for example, when I onboard a new team members. So I already have structured all the SOPs, all the main uh, main tasks that, uh, to operate my business. So so the next time I have to onboard uh, one of my, uh, a new team member, I don't spend any time into training that person because the, the training, it's already in the systems, okay? So I just... Uh, uh, give the 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 permission to to like a, a drive folder with all these steps, all the documents and the videos they need, and they just go train themselves. And after one or two days, they come back and they are ready to to go. So this is this, this is just one of the uh, of the benefits. There are several others, like for example, freeing up your your mind from. Uh, uh, from the the like daily tasks, so that you don't have to put like mental energy on on performing those tasks. You can free up that time. You do it like just following the, the checklist or whatever it is your your SOP, and uh, and and just uh, put that mental energy into more creative tasks. Okay, so so this systematization of business sometimes it's it's uh, um, misunderstood because people think that. Uh, it, it kills creativity. Like standardizing things kills creativity. I'm going. I'm telling you, actually, it's the opposite because you free up your mind of these like easy daily tasks that you normally put your mental energy because you have to focus on what's the next step, how to do it, and you have to remember how you do how you did it last time. But now it's, you have it everything written. There, there is a structured process, so you can. You can do that on autopilot, okay? Just do it, uh, following the process, so that you can switch. You can uh, switch your mental energy into more creative tasks. That's that's really uh, can be a game changer kind of a mindset and habit for for your business. Yeah, that really makes sense uh, because when you are stuck doing the mundane tasks, then yeah, you don't have time for you know other bigger picture, strategic kind of uh, uh, thinking that you need to do as a business owner. But so a lot of Amazon sellers, they are uh, solopreneurs, right? They are the only people working on their business. So do you think SOPs are important for solopreneurs as well? If they're you know if it's just them in the business doing everything, if they're just starting out. Or is it more for people who have employees and team members? Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a great question, and honestly, that's uh, that's one of the most uh, misunderstood things because uh, uh, I would definitely like short answer. Yes, the uh, even solopreneurs should start using uh, SOPs, and uh, long longer answers. I'm not going to go too long, but the the some more details about this is that as I mentioned before. You know, uh, it's it's something like very useful to onboard a new team member. Uh, some people in your team. Uh, so so if you start uh, structuring your, your business now and creating SOPs, it will that process of shifting to new team members it will be much much easier. And also also as we as we mentioned before, it's not just a matter of transferring knowledge to other. Other people. It's it's also to to set knowledge uh, in a standardized way so that 
you uh, you you uh, can repeat the same process over and over okay so uh, you, basically this way you will have consistent outcomes so that's that's what we're really looking for the sops enable you to have consistent consistent outcomes okay so instead of doing one day one thing and the other day uh, the, the same thing um, uh, the tr trying to do uh, similar things um, that can can lead to different results you know you this way you you set what are the steps so that you can have consistent results over time so for example let's say you're, you're doing some PPC optimization and, and you, you really you really that day feel great and you find out new ways or you, you figure out a, a new way to do something and if, if you're if you're not following a, a structure a process if you're not writing down what you're doing uh, basically you're going to probably lose that that process that you you just created you invented maybe and, and next time you, you have to figure out again how you did last time so it's not a matter of just uh, cooperation with other people definitely it's 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 a must to have if you have a team because otherwise it, it really gets too, too messy but even to organize yourself better and to and to keep consistent results that's that's really um uh, the benefit of that solopreneurs can have into using sops okay that makes sense so what are some different types of SOPs that Amazon sellers can consider creating for their business? Yeah, so uh, there are several different types. Uh, I can mention a, a few of them that are the, the, the main ones that I use. So uh, you can create SOPs in a written form uh, aided by images. Okay, so this is great for step-by-step -step processes that have only one possible outcome. So for example, um, creating a shipping plan. Okay, so that's just just step by step. You number each step, what to do one after the other. Maybe helped by screenshots, so the person can understand uh, what what's the, the the process where they have to click, and uh, so it gives a like, like a visual understanding. So um, that's that's uh, that's uh, that's the easiest way to create an SOP. So writing text uh, steps and uh, and helped by screenshots. Uh, the other, the, the best actually way to create a, a, a um, an SOP it's by video. So most of the time the the video the video SOPs are great whenever you are using your your PC uh, or or a tool uh, or a software to to run the, the the process. And for Amazon sellers, probably like ninety five percent of processes are run into a computer using a tool. So so that's really the main the main way you you can you can uh, record um, a, a process. So that's basically for that, that's really useful whenever you have to record a process that have in it um, pos several different outcomes. Uh, so for example, let's say like keyword research. Okay, so it's something that it's not always that way. Uh, it change it change case by case. Okay, so every time it it's it can be different depending on on the product search form. So so during a video, you can basically show the person, for example, you, you walking through the keyword research on on uh, on Helium Ten, and explain your thought process. Okay, you explain the mindset that you are. How are you thinking about each? Each element, okay. So you can transfer your knowledge to the person who is looking at that. And by the way, again, if you do that just for yourself, it, it will basically solidify your knowledge, and so, so that you can do it always the same way. Then uh, there are there are flowcharts. So for uh, I'm sure you're familiar with those flowcharts, like like squares uh, followed by by circles and so on. So these these are these are some. Um, these are useful whenever there are like binary options. So if this happened, then do that. If this other thing happened, then do something else. Okay. So for example, PPC optimization. It's a. It's a. It's a good fit for this kind of uh, flowcharts because, um, for example, whenever uh, the if the the bid it's overspending, you do something. If the if the uh, uh, if the keyword it's not uh, d having enough impressions, for example, you do something else. Okay, so so there are different different uh, tasks depending on the situation. Okay, so you use a flowchart to visually represent all these these binary options 
during the PPC optimization, for example. And then uh, the, the other, other two ways are the process map. So it's very similar to a flowchart, but it's more like a high view of one big process. So for example, I use it for, uh, let's say, to representing the whole uh, product development phase. Okay, so I, I, I show um, like the, the first phase is the research, the second phase is the validation, then contacting supplier, uh, uh, getting samples and so on. So these are like a high view of the whole, whole process. It helps you to, to strategize, okay? So, so SOPs are meant to basically uh, put yourself more into the position of the CEO instead of the employee, okay? So right now, most of us, are like employees of our own business okay so we would like to become more like a ceo so working in more like strategic tasks and uh, and hand over the other to 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 the team members so so the process map helps you do that and lastly is the checklist so checklists are super useful used by uh, pilots uh, in in the airplanes and so that's that's really uh, a way to basically make sure that every step on of, of the of the list it's done and it doesn't matter really uh, the order of those steps as long as you check all the points you 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 are fine with that so for example like uh, whenever i use it whenever i launch a new product there are several actions that you need to do when you launch a new product like uploading images and setting up vine and um, um, tracking the keywords on helium 10 and so on so all these things are are different like checks that you need to need to uh check in order to to remember like the the, the all the tasks that needs to be performed in, inside the the sop so these are like um five different types of sops that you guys can use in your business depending on the type of process there is a different match that. Wow, that's uh, pretty interesting. I had not thought about SOPs in such detail and that there could be, I mean, of course, we know that there are so many different ways of, you know, presenting information, but yeah, it's very interesting to see how different types of SOPs are suitable for different kinds of situations. So do you have any tips for sellers on how to create SOPs? Like how do they go about creating SOPs if they have um, you know, specific tasks in mind. Yeah, so so creating SOPs really seems like a, a daunting uh, task. Uh, it really, it's not. Um, what you, the, one of the reasons is that people think that they have to maybe uh, stay like one day uh, and writing all that down, um, but it, it's not the case. Uh, usually, the, the way the way you uh, you go about creating SOPs, it's uh, it's capturing uh, the systems, not like writing. Uh, what I mean by capturing is that you already have the systems in place. Okay, don't think that it's a new thing. The systems and the SOPs are already in your mind, basically. You are doing everyday things uh, on your business, right? So you are already performing those processes. The, the only problem is that you have those steps, uh, those checklists, those, those flowcharts. You have it in your mind, okay? So you just need to capture those steps. So, so for example, an experiment I can give you, like you can do it right after you, you uh, listen to this podcast. You can just... Uh, 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 set see what what do you have to do today okay and then uh, for example let's say uh, you're you're going to do some like keyword research okay great so uh, start so um, you you can download a, a tool that is called screen customatic or you can use a, a loom several tools that allows you to to record your screen okay so just uh, start recording your screen and uh, and uh, perform that task while you are you are commenting it okay so just say whatever you are doing in the moment you are actually doing it and after like 20 minutes i don't know 30 minutes the time that you take to 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 run the this um keyword research you will have your first your first sop okay maybe the first time it will not be really the the best uh, the best so you you have to develop like a mindset on how to to structure the the, the way you you talk during the video or the way you you do the, the, the you perform the steps but that's essentially it so you you can really start capturing your sops while you are doing it okay so you are not spending more time okay so that's the first step so try to 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 start this way and then you can go more 
more like in depth uh, with all the things uh, I just me I, I mentioned before with flowcharts, uh, checklists, but you can really start by uh, collecting SOPs this way. Um, record your screen while you are actually doing the task and then keep it and uh, it, it will serve you in the future. So here the, the mentality and the mindset that you should implement is the, like the, the one of the story of the, the turtle and the hare. You remember the, the, the story, the, the, the lesson that you learned there, it's a, a steady and slow win the race, okay? So we're here for the long haul, okay? So we don't have to do everything in one day, okay? So just uh, uh, keep this habit of being steady, of uh, capturing videos and, and, and writing down the, the, the steps that you are taking in every in every uh, every time you do something, um, let, let's say just two two three three times a week. Okay, just build this habit, and it, it will go over for forever almost. Uh, but I, I can assure you, like after two three months, you will have like 80, 90 percent of your SOPs written down if you use this method. Okay, so in the time you are actually performing it, just record a video or or write that down the SOP, the, the steps, and then you can go further with uh, uh, improving those. Yeah, so that's uh, that's yeah. the, that's my way. <laughs> that totally makes sense. And uh, for everyone listening or watching on YouTube, we also have an ebook that Gianmarco has shared with us. So if you go to theasianseller.com, um, search for Gianmarco over there, and uh, you'll come to the um, landing page of this podcast and you, you'll be able to download uh, the PDF. If you're watching on YouTube, look in the description of this video and you'll be able to find um, the downloadable ebook as well. So very useful content in the ebook too. So what about the structure of an SOP and uh, you know, what does it look like and what are the different steps? I mean, one of the things that you know sometimes I worry about is when I'm creating processes for the team, am I being too detailed? And how much detail should go into the SOP? And is there something that mm -hmm. can be excluded or, you know, yeah. So what is the overall structure? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, right. So that's a good question. So I can give you like uh, the, the sample structure that I use in, for the SOPs that I use and then um, and then um, we, we can comment also like what when when you can go um, and exclude some of these uh, steps in the structure. So the main structure it's made uh, out of seven points. Okay, so the, the first uh, the, the first line of your SOPs is the SOP number and the SOP name. Okay, you should number your SOPs because it, it will be just easier to find them. Okay, usually the first number of the SOP, it's it's the, the department number. So uh, you should have uh, a division of the of the departments in your in your company. Like for example, uh, department one, it's in inventory and logistics. Department two, it's marketing and ads. So so you divide SOPs by departments. Okay. So even if you are a solopreneur, you still have departments. You you yeah. just don't realize it, but everybody has, right? Uh, so for example, SOP one point two for me means it's, a, it's the SOP that belongs to department one and is the second SOP, okay? And then I have uh, every, every SOP is numbered that way. Okay, so that's the, the name of the SOP. Then you, you start writing like why it is important, okay? Just one line to, to say why it is important. This is, this is especially important when you, when you actually outsource the, the SOPs to, to somebody else because they, they might not know what's in your mind. So. Uh, People really, uh, um, it's, it's better for people to actually know and be aware of why the, the task they are performing, it's, it's in, how, how it is impacting the, the overall business, okay? So that, that's, that's important to make it uh, people aware that what they're doing is important. Then the point number three is that you put the estimated time required, okay? So you do it yourself the first time and you, you, you time yourself in order to, to understand a ballpark, okay, you don't have to be precise. So you just say estimated time required 30 to 45 minutes, okay? So that's that's another like ballpark to to, to give a better understanding of how uh, how, how long the, this SOP should take. Then the fourth point, the fourth point is the uh, resources needed, okay? This, this is very important because 
in order to perform every task, you will need to have like some tools, some software, you maybe need to download something, you maybe need some login credentials, you maybe need to have like a Chrome extension. So, so you have to you have to list that in order so to, to be to be very easily transferable. Okay, so whenever the next time you're going to transfer this task, it's written there what people need to download what what kind of uh, a software they need and what kind of login credentials they need and you should provide those person with uh, with the login credential then the fifth point is a frequency or a trigger so when this sop starts is it like to be performed every monday for example so i have processes that are performed every monday like inventory level check uh, every monday we know that uh, we we should check our inventory levels and, and see whether uh, we should order more or we should do any any transfer of inventory uh, or the trigger if, if it's not like a periodical type of task there is there is still a trigger so when this it triggered for example whenever um a new product it's confirmed it, it starts the trigger of ordering the uh, sorry like we start producing the designs the graphic designs of the of the, the, the images that will go into the listing so that's the trigger when the product is confirmed let's start the design process so you have to make that um, um you have to you have to state that in the sop the sixth point is the is the um, is the core basically of the um, of the SOP, which are the steps, the numbered steps. So you still use the same num SOP number that I, I said before, but you just add one more number that is the, the step number. Okay, so I'll give you an example. Um, before we said SOP 1.2, okay, so department one, SOP two, and then we start the, the steps. So step one, step two, step three. So, so it's that's gonna look like uh, step 1.2.1 then there is the step 1.2.2 and so on okay so if you if you really go into these details you are gonna be like super super in charge of of that task because then you can start analyze step by step and you can really improve each step or even delete one step if that's not uh, it's not not uh, not necessary and you can you know also why is, is this useful because you can refer very easily to each step so so next time you you can tell to to your uh, to your designer uh, you say for example oh i noticed that uh, you skipped uh, step 1.2.4 <laughs> uh, is th there was any problem with that i mean let's let's talk let's find solutions so you can refer very easily to each step okay and the, so after you number all the steps required, the last thing you, you write in the SOP is the, is the measurement or like the KPI of the, of the SOP. So how do we know this SOP is, was a success? So, so for example, if there is a, is a product development, um, uh, for example, I have a KPI to, to do uh, at least 20 keywords uh, or an uh, analysis on 20, at least 20 keywords uh, a week. Okay, so that's the KPI that the, per the person should know, uh, they, they should reach. Or for example, if there is not a really clear uh, KPI, we say like what a successful results look like. So you just write down w how it looks like when, when we finish this process. So, for example, um, when placing an order, the, the, the SOP to place an order, the successful result is that you get an invoice and the, the, the deposit payment is done. Okay, so there is no KPI there. You just say, this is the, this is the successful result that we are aiming to, to get. Okay, so these are the seven steps. So, um, in some cases, you can, can skip some of this. Uh, I would say, like, uh, it's um, the, the, the more the more precise and the more detailed you are, the better it is, but also it's a, it's a balance, okay? So you should not spend countless hours into writing these SOPs, okay? So uh, good enough, it's good enough in, in, this, in this case, okay? So, so remember that it's, a, it's an iterative process. So you are going to keep updating and updating every time your, your SOP. So, so just, uh, it, it's, it's better that you have at least one structure and then you keep improving it in the future. And, and one interesting way to improve this SOP is that 
you just put the, the bare minimum uh, of this SOP in place there. And then whenever you get some questions from your team, they say, oh, I didn't see this in the SOP. How should I do this? Okay, great. Now it's time to put that question into the answer to that question into the SOP. Okay, so over time, basically, you will not get anybody ask you any questions. So they will not uh, bother you anymore because everything is written in the SOP. So that's your, your goal, basically cover every possible scenario and, and questions in the SOP so that you can do your CEO job and let other people uh, do, do the, the tasks that you, you, you gave them to do. That totally makes sense. And I can already think of ways of, you know, how processes in my own businesses can be improved by uh, having SOPs. And I do have SOPs for certain tasks, but I think there's a lot more that we can do to um, yeah, define all of the different steps that are needed for even the smallest of tasks. So um, what are some of the tools that you use to generate and collect SOPs? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so these are very common tools. Most of them are free. So that's that's a uh, great news. So in order to generate to generate video SOPs, for example, I use a uh, screencast-o-matic. It's a uh, it's a free tool to basically record your screen uh, or you can use Loom. Loom it used to be free, now it's uh, it, it's uh, it's a freemium plan, so uh, you only get um, so much uh, with the free, but then you need to start to pay. Or Vimeo, Vimeo it's a paid uh, plan, but it's uh, it's it's great. You you really you really have great quality recordings. So these are to record videos uh, to make like checklists uh, or or um, to make checklists. I use Asana. It's it's a project management tool. You can also use like Google Sheets, Google Docs, Google Slides. All the all the um, like office product uh, from Microsoft or all the Google uh, Google uh, tools and uh, in order to make flowcharts I use a uh, lucid chart or Canva even Canva I, I guess like most people know Canva it's very useful uh, it's very easy to use so you can generate very nice nice graphics uh, with flowcharts and in order to collect all these uh, SOPs I simply put them in, in a drive folder or in on or on Dropbox and the video I use um, YouTube most of the time but make sure guys you you put the 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 video as a, as private not not publicly listed otherwise you're gonna you're gonna share with the world your internal SOPs which you don't want right so as simple as that and make sure in your Google Drive or Dropbox you divide the SOPs with departments and you can find like a, an easy structure of my suggested department in, in the ebook that Megla just mentioned before you can see like how you could divide your folders in your google drive um, main folders in, in order to to easily collect all the sops that's great advice and um do you have any um best practices for running sops yeah, definitely. So I can give um, a couple of tips. So uh, the first one is that you should always assign a responsible person for to, to each SOP. Okay. So so there is all, always just one person. Okay. So because otherwise you you run with uh, step on each other's feet. Okay. So make sure that that person is is the responsible one. So. So basically, every time there is a change on the SOP, so things keep changing on Amazon, keep uh, developing. So every change on the SOP should be managed by the responsible person. Okay, and every time there is like one more question, whenever we find the whole team finds that there there is um there is one question that is not answered in the SOP, that person is the one responsible to update it. So you see how after you you have you start having a even a small team, even just you and, and a VA, you start hand them over this these responsibilities to others. So so this process, this daunting process of creating SOPs, it's not so much daunting anymore because there is this responsible person who is actually updating the, the processes for you. Okay. Okay, so every time she, for example, your VA asks you a question, you answer the question and say, great, now update the SOP because <laughs> so the person that will come next after you 
will know that answer you don't need to ask me or, or anybody else right so that's the number one thing the 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 second tip is to is to um to number as i said b before the the sops um in order that you can actually create an sop database okay so th that's that's really important because uh, at the beginning you can manage easily to to find all the SOPs, but after a while, I mean, I, I got I reached a point in which I have maybe like sixty SOPs, seventy. So so it becomes like really hard to find at some point, you know. So I created an SOP database. It's simply like an Excel file with in which you you write the SOP number, the department, the responsible person that I just mentioned the sop link so so the actual link to to the to the document in the, in his, his own folder and the, the tools and accesses uh, that are needed logins that are needed for that sop so so in one glance you have all your sops there divided by departments divided by responsible person so so you can really do your ceo job of structuring better your business systematizing it, systematizing it and uh, you know really making sure that every every aspect of your business is covered by by a proper sop that every every process it's um, it's actually updated and actually I, I forgot to mention another column in this in this excel file it should be like the last update so you 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 write the the date when it was last updated uh, so that you know how recent that sop it is so that's that the, already having this kind of uh, the sop database will allow you to really reach new heights in your in your uh, sop game and uh, basically yeah it will, will really help you to to improve each uh, each process uh, and go like very deep in in each in each system that you are developing. Yeah, that is absolutely fascinating, and I really like the system of numbering the SOPs because that can just make it so much easier, especially if you are referring to um, a specific uh, step in the SOP. And um, yeah, because I can. You know, myself with my team, I have to take screenshots and say, "Hey, you didn't do this portion of the of the SLP." Uh, but yeah, if it's numbered, then you can very easily just uh, refer them to the number. So that is very, very uh, a good tip over there. And what are some common mistakes that you see people making? Yeah, so a uh, common mistake is the one that we, you know, people just uh, set and forget it. So they just, they think that they create the process once and it's forever, um, it will serve them forever. I mean, in part, it's true that the main structure will keep staying, but, you know, SOPs and systems in your in your company are continuously, continuously developing, okay? So you are always working on your current company and in your future company okay so you have to have this mindset of um, having things set up for for today and for like the, the short term future but also for for the long term future so so you, you have to make sure that every every time you know uh, you you question every time that you run that uh, that sop if it's really updated if can be if it actually can be uh, improved and that's actually another of the of the advantages or benefits of having sops it's that instead of having all these complex systems in your mind you have written down so that one by one you can really check if there is anything that can be improved instead of thinking unconsciously that that's the way to do things actually question yourself so this is this is a common mistake that people do uh, is that they they maybe think that that's that's the way it is and uh, that's that's how things are done but you should question all the time like is this step necessary because it might save lots of time if you if if, if you're if you're deleting eliminating one of unnecessary step so always be questioning your systems always think that there is a way to improve your systems okay so that that's a, that's another tip and the, the, another um another mistake that i see people making is that um they they uh they think that yeah like to, they need to be uh, they need to have a team 
basically in order to to have SOPs. But that's not true, as we as we said. Uh, you 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 can benefit of having SOPs and systems really uh, from day one. Uh, being just a solopreneur, you can really benefit of structuring structuring your business better, especially now. Really, that we're we're discussing this many times with uh, like um, the the advent of these new um, aggregators and buyers. You know, these people have uh, big teams, a lot of money. And uh, they they have great systems uh, in place. So, how are you going to compete in the future if you are not organized, um, at least uh, partially the, the way they are organized? So, so really, these the SOPs are, are really a, a must in order to 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 stay competitive in the market. Because uh, uh, from now on, it's gonna get ev- just just getting more complex, right? So. So you really need to have systems in place in order to, to guarantee consistency of results and scalability. And you cannot scale uh, if you don't have any, you don't have processes and systems in place. So th- these are the main the main tips. Like um, probably um, pe- people are mistakenly undervaluating the the importance of systems and. Uh, um, they they will experience that it's impossible, pro- probably really impossible, scale a business without proper systematizing your business and with with the right procedures in place. I think that's a very good point that you made about exiting a business. So a lot of the aggregators are actually looking for businesses that are well optimized, that are efficient. And, um, you know, what better way to make the whole business efficient than having great SOPs and systems in place. And um, if you are, you know, getting ready to sell your business, then it's easier to just transfer everything to the to the aggregator if you have all of these. And I think that overall increases the value of the company as well, because they have to, you know, invest less time and effort understanding the business and taking over. So, yeah, really good points there, Jim. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Actually, if I can add something to that, uh, you know, I can tell you in my experience, for example, like last year, I spoke with several brokers because I was looking to sell my business. And uh, so, you know, the the aggregators are becoming very famous, right? So they are buying lots of businesses, but actually, you know, they are the ones who pay less, you know, the aggregators are the ones who actually put up out the money. So they want to pay as less, as little as possible to, for your business. But but on the other on the other hand, you know, there are there are like private buyers. They, they they are willing to pay even more if there is a good fit with your brand. Okay, so an insight that I got from one of the broker uh, that I was talking with uh, was that um, they value much much more businesses that have very ordered, structured, and very good SOPs because basically, you know, these people don't want to buy a job, you know, they don't want to buy your business and, and start working in it, you know, they want to have like a very like well-oiled machine that runs like clockwork, okay? So if you build up that clockwork machine, that that well-oiled machine in your business right now, that's going to really uh, potentially improve the value of your business exponentially, you know, uh, in, 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 se- in selling a business, you know, even like a 0.2, 0.3x uh, multiple uh, addition, you know, thanks to this, these improvements, it can, it can be like several hundred thousand dollars, you know, so, so it's really like a super valuable um, thing that you do and work that you do in your business in order to scale it uh, while you you are working on it and this way you're you're making it a more desirable business so if it's a desirable business it, it's worth more you know it's as simple as that so so really SOPs help you even increase the value of your business eventually yeah that totally makes sense Wow, Jen Marco. So this has been really awesome. Um, so many good tips and advice. And I have learned quite a bit for my own business as well. And I just want to remind everyone that uh, Jen Marco is also giving away a free ebook to everybody. So if you go to the asianseller.com, search for Jen Marco and uh, go to the podcast landing page, and you'll be able to download the ebook. If you're watching on YouTube, look on the description below and you'll be able to download the PDF from there. So, Gianmarco, do you want to quickly? 
quickly tell us about uh, your podcast and the seller process and, um, you know, your business and your services a little bit more as well? And how can people reach you? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So um, uh, I, I recently launched this podcast called The Seller Process. You can find it at thesellerprocess.com. And uh, here we, we discuss several systems, uh, processes, and SOPs. So we, we discuss actionable um, actions actionable systems that uh, sellers use in their own business. And we actually feature also a Megla in one of our episodes. So we were talking about supplying, how to find suppliers in India. So, so we always speak one very specific topic and we go deep into the step-by-step -step process, okay? So in order to create like a chit-chat free uh, episode, uh, we we really dive deep into into the specifics of the of the um, of the processes. So you can find that at uh, the website the the sellerprocess.com. We're also on YouTube, and uh, you can find us on Facebook, LinkedIn. If you would like to connect with me directly, also I'm I'm really happy to do that. You can find me on LinkedIn uh, uh, with uh, when my searching my name Gianmarco Melli, and uh, yeah, feel free to to reach out. And um, and and check out the the podcast. Absolutely, and uh, we'll also include links to um, the podcast, the website, and also your LinkedIn in the show notes uh, on theasianseller.com. So, uh, Jen Marco, thank you so much for joining me on the podcast. It was absolutely amazing. A lot of learning. I'm sure people will really uh, appreciate this, uh, the whole idea of creating SOPs and uh, it will definitely be beneficial to a lot of sellers. So thank you very much for your time today. Thank you, Megla. All right. Take care. Bye.